Karen Silkwood was 28 years old, a mother of three, and the chemical technician at the Care McGee Plutonium Fuels Production Plant in Crescent, Oklahoma. Silkwood, known for her political activism, was elected by her co-workers to join the Union Oil Chemical and Atomic Workers Union in 1974. During a September meeting with the Union, she alleged that Care McGee had hazardous working conditions. She agreed to spy on the company to corroborate her claims. She found many things were unsafe, including high levels of plutonium, low-quality protective gear, and corporate doctors downplaying the risks of cancer. Workers were contaminated over and over and over again, and nobody told them about cancer. As a matter of fact, when they took the stand, they said they didn't know about cancer until they read about it in the newspaper during the trial. There's no question about the fact that they're going to die. One man said that he thought he was contaminated on an average of twice a week for four years while he worked there. 19-year-old people who came in were contaminated within one or two days after they started work. They painted over the contamination. They didn't decontaminate desks, walls, floors. They just painted it over with white paint in order to hurry up and get the production back online. Two months later, she died in a car crash while on her way to deliver a manila folder of evidence of malfeasance to a New York Times reporter. This folder was not recovered from the crash, nor has it been found to this day. A week before her fatal crash, she was tested and found to have high levels of plutonium in her system. Plutonium was traced to her fridge in her apartment, specifically a bologna sandwich within. Kara McGee argued that she did all this to herself intentionally to embarrass the company, including die in a car crash. Lawyers arguing on behalf of Silkwood found there was damage to the back of her vehicle, indicating that she was most likely forced off the road by another car. The jury was presented two theories. One, that she had done it deliberately to herself to embarrass the company. The other theory was that Kerr McGee had done it to prevent uh, or sabotage the investigation. To this day, we still do not know the true circumstances surrounding her death. Her impact is felt, however. Following Karen's lead, far more people have become suspicious of working conditions in nuclear plants. This has led to higher standards nationwide. While we may have closure knowing the safety protocols of these nuclear plants have vastly improved, one question remains that we may never get an answer to. Who killed Karen Silkwood? An Oklahoma woman hailed as one of the original corporate whistleblowers died under mysterious circumstances. News on Sex Anchor, Lori Fulbright has the new details and shows us what Karen Silkwood's children are thinking 40 years later. Her story sparked a Hollywood movie in the 1980s, but to this day, her children still wait for answers about what truly happened to their mother, Karen Silkwood. Every year goes by, the less likely we are to find out what happened. On November 13th, 1974, along this stretch of highway, about 30 miles north of Oklahoma City, just south of Crescent, Karen Silkwood ran off the road and crashed. She died at the scene. I think there was foul play involved. Michael Meadows and his sisters, Christy and Dawn, were just kids when their mother died. Too young to understand then, he now believes his mother's death was part of an elaborate cover-up. She was hard-headed. When they pushed back on her, of course, her natural response was to push even harder. Karen made plutonium pellets for a nuclear fuel.